Hey everyone, it's Andy Cloudy Mulder back with a, another 80s collection flick through video. This time we're going back to 1981 when New Wave of British Heavy Metal was at its peak. Um, a lot like 1980, I don't have a great deal, certainly compared to the other years in this decade. Uh, you're going to see a total, I think, of 37 records, uh, some of which two or three are duplicates and there's one triple as well but um quality over quantity here or i think i've got some quality in there but i've also got a couple of duffers in here too as usual um if you make it through to the end please leave a, a comment let me know what your favorite albums from 1981 are any glaring omissions you think i have from my collection and any mistakes i possibly made as well there's been one or two as i've gone along and it's been really helpful for me to make sure that my um the cataloging system that i've got is uh, up to date and has the correct dates in there as well so um, feel free to point those out i don't mind at all so without further ado uh, flip, turn the camera around, we'll do the flip through and um, oh yeah, hope you enjoy it, let me know what you think, thanks for watching Anvil, hard and hard and heavy next uh, Black Sabbath Mobrils, probably the least well known Dio fronted album of any of the pro projects bands that he's been in for me anyway um Certainly the sign of the Southern Cross is the only one that jumps out at me there. I need to give that one another spin. Uh, this one I got as part of a bundle with a bunch of other stuff. That's, uh, it's probably destined to leave the collection, but it's it's kind of... Uh, it's got a few good rocking tunes on it, but not fantastic. And what is fantastic, and one of my favourite uh, new wave of British heavy metal bands, uh, and, sorry, albums, is Night of the Demon by... Uh, Demon, of course, um, absolutely fantastic album. Uh, you should listen to that one if you haven't already. Listen to that one and Tigers of Pang Tang Wildcat back to back. That's uh, that's a good night. Um, now I've never heard this album. It's one that I've had to put out the inbox uh, to uh, show all the eighty-one releases in my collection. This is Gillen Future Shock. Um, looking forward to giving this one a spin. I'm hoping it's more on the uh, the uh, the. M 80s hard rock metal side than magic was that was a real disappointment that one uh what else do we have oh another gillen as well this is uh the uk double trouble with one live one studio album double vinyl release uh, the second disc on this is is fantastic it's just sort of gillen just goofing about uh which is pretty good uh another killer new wave of british heavy metal release girl school hit and run on bronze uh, I made I've got a few copies of this this is my OG 81 UK pressing prize possession in the collection then I have uh, an 85 fame reissue which is the first copy that I got on uh, vinyl they're still fairly cheap these versions and they sound really good uh, no real difference other than it's got a barcode at the top with fame across the side uh, of the uh, the corner and uh last but not least the 2014 uh more recent uh, reissue again i think they sound pretty good uk track listing um judas priest point of entry one of my least played Judas Priest album, I'd say, other than heading out to the highway. Not a lot really jumps out of this album for me. Uh, cover doesn't help at all. It's a really dull cover for some reason. Um, one of the few Kiss albums I have in my collection. Uh, the Elder, I picked it up because it was cheap and because um, most Kiss fans don't like it. So I thought, you know what, maybe I do because I'm not a fan of Kiss at all. And uh, yeah... Uh, Crocus Hardware, good banging hard rock uh, in the vein of ACDC, but uh, you know what? I prefer these guys a bit more to ACDC, certainly in the 80s catalogue. Uh, this is uh, Hardware. Uh, next. Uh, Michael Schenker Group, second album, MSG. 
or MSG second album, the Michael Schenker group. Uh, who knows? Uh, this has what, Gary Barden on vocals, who's uh, absolutely killer vocals. I do love his vocals. And uh, also in the same year, um, MSG One Night at Budokan double album. Um, this album is still pretty cheap. I bought it when I bought it at the time. I ended up paying over the odds, and I was uh, really pissed off at myself um, for not checking. But then I've looked on Discogs now, and it's it kind of goes for what I paid for it back then. So one day it might go up in value. Uh, more with their album Warhead. This is the new wave of British heavy metal, probably most famous for having uh, was it Paul Mario Day on vocals. Uh, one time Iron Maiden vocalist before Paul Diano. Motorhead, No Sleep Till Hammersmith. Great single disc live album with all your favourites on there. All my favourites anyway. Uh, Ozzy, Diary of a Madman. Um... Melodic New Wave of British Heavy Metal, Prey Mantis, Time Tells No Lies, fantastic Rodney Matthews cover. Uh, Queen Greatest Hits, I absolutely love this album. My sister had it as uh, when I was younger, she played it a lot. I just um, uh, really enjoy this album from start to finish, so... I always had to end up getting my own copy. Um, have very old, very few Queen albums, so um, I tend to spin that one rather than anything else. Rainbow, difficult to cure. A bit of a maligned period, I guess, in uh, Rainbow's catalogue, but I do like Jolene Turner's vocals, so um, that's not too bad. Now, I've got two copies of this one. This is Raven Rock Until You Drop, their debut album. This one, which is in the best condition, of the two has all the inners it has the um backstage passes the lyric sheet the poster everything absolutely fantastic uh, really good condition uh and then as some um, uh, vclt one time from jim davis i got a another copy this one's a little bit more beat up and there's i think the poster's missing and the um these came in a single sheet. There's four of them. There's a backstage pass and some merch details. Uh, the other one's still got them perforated. So they're unperforated here. But the, the cool thing here is it's one of these signed copies that was uh, released, given out, sold, what have you, in the US on their first uh, trip out there. So absolutely fantastic to get that one. Uh, Riot. I don't have much early Riot in my collection, but I do have Fire Down Under. Great album. Ah, the rods. Uh, it's the hype stick. The hype stick is actually stuck on the album for this one, but this is their debut as well. Um, so it's got uh, Carl Kennedy on it, who went on to be a producer, produced the first Anthrax album, and uh, David uh, Feinstein, 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 um, Ronnie James Dio's cousin. Account. I think they would maybe be in Elf together, maybe. I don't know, I don't really know Elf that well. Uh, Rose Tattoo, Assault and Battery, good more sort of um, ACDC style rock. Uh, Saracen, another um, new wave of British heavy metal band, but more on the melodic side uh, again. Uh, but I really, really do love this album. It's it's it don't buy it expecting it to be Iron Maiden or anything like that. It's uh, it's closer to Magnum really than Iron Maiden, but a little, a little bit more rockier. Uh, Denim and Leather by Saxon. What well, this must be their fourth studio album, and they only released their first in '79, so that's some going for two three years. Ah, now this one. Um, he, um, Silver Stars is the name of the band, a Japanese band, and uh, yes, that is the title of the album, Rape Noise. Um, I can't even remember what this one sounds like anymore. It's very raw, rough and ready, I think. Um, but uh, it, uh, it's a Japanese press and it has the Obi strip. Um, they've all chosen British names, like you've got uh, Razor Cruiser, Iron Kid, and then for some reason, 
Robbie Claft and Richard Hope. They had the... God knows how they came up with those names, but uh, there you go. Uh, now, uh, two albums in 81 from this band as well, Tigers of Pang Tang, uh, Crazy Nights. Um, this is when uh, John Sykes and um, John Deverell joined the band. Uh, and then they also followed that up the same year with uh, Spellbound. Both good albums, but to me, Wildcat is the pinnacle of uh, Tigers of Pang Tang. Uh, Van Halen, Fair Warning. Again, an album that hardly gets any spins really from my collection. Uh, getting to the end of it now. Uh, Vardis, uh, The World's Insane. I spent a little bit more than one ninety nine on it, I must admit. Um, this is a really cool New Wave of British Heavy Metal band. Again, it's one of those tracks, Steam Along, ends with kind of like a steam train um, sound. Um, and it's got one of those runouts that never runs out. So it just goes on and on and on forever, which is, is quite cool. Um, this one I got at uh, VCLT um, in a package from uh, Greg the Egg Black Ball Rules. Uh, Vic Vergat, guitarist from Registry, early 70s Swiss Rockers, Toad. And the album's down to the bone. I think he bought it for me just as a bit of a joke, but I played it and uh, I quite liked it. Though I, I couldn't tell you what it sounded like now. I'll probably have to give it another spin, but there's many, many things ahead that I want to play before that one again, that's for sure. Uh, more New Wave of British Heavy Metal. Of course, it's 81. It's the year of it. It's in full flight. This is Stage Fright from Witchfind. And the last couple from the compilations, I've got the, uh, the first Friday Rock Show compilation. Uh, the Friday Rock Show is the Friday night show that I used to listen to when I was a teenager. Certainly not back in 1981, though. I didn't know what metal was back then. Uh, but look who we've got in here. We've got uh, Spider, Diamond Head, Sweet Savage, Last Flight, Demon, Black Axe, Witch Find, and a Zero. Uh, a couple of obscure bands on there. And the last, uh, this album is not available in the shops because it was from KTEL. This is Axe Attack Volume 2. Now, this is some rare tracks on here. Probably one of the only albums in my collection you will find any White Snake, any Def Leppard, and any Ted Nugent. Uh, but um, they made it onto this compilation. But, and, I've, uh, and I've got it. It's one of those things. I've got Axe Attack Volume 1 as well. So here it stays. But some good tracks on here. Otherwise, uh, Mid is in the Room Morgue as well. Love that song from Maiden. Okay, that's your lot. That's 1981. Um, as usual, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if I've missed any glaring errors that I've missed or even any glaring errors that I've uh, made. I've been um, updating my cataloging system based on some of the feedback I've got, but I've slipped something in from the wrong year or it turns out to be a reissue. So really happy to receive any comments you have, whether they be uh, good or uh, constructive. And um, I will see you in the next year. Bueno.